Oh, God, God. No, 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 no. They found it. The Lincolns found the ball. No, clear it. And they've scored. They, I cannot believe that. Oh, God. For frick's sake. What the hell are we doing? And they're going to rub it in. Oh, go away. Ah. Not again. No. This could as it stands, overtake Port Vale as the worst home game of the season. That was absolutely appalling. The Devon Derby, one of the biggest rivalries in English football. The biggest clash of football for not just Devon, but for the people of Cornwall too. The hub of football for the far southwest of England. Home to the city of Exeter, the United of Torquay, and of course, the mighty Argyle of Plymouth. It doesn't get any bigger than this. Both clubs, well, not Torquay, will be aiming for bragging rights from this match because we are the best. No matter what the perils, no matter what the hardships, no matter what... It's a lovely morning to wake up to. Beautiful. Derby day. I just say, what a lovely day, what a lovely morning, what a beautiful morning for the day of the derby. Yes guys, so I bring you lovely, lovely Plymouth and, that, and I'm on my bike for the first time. Took three rides around this gorgeous city for the first time in a long while. The Devon derby, it is derby day. It is a Copa 90 sort of derby day, but no, no, it really is a derby day. Plymouth Argyle are away to that annoying club up the road, Exeter City. That way, that way, that way, it's that way. Um, now, um, you may be thinking, Jack, if you're playing Exeter away, why are you heading into Plymouth City Centre? Um, there is some reasoning into this. Uh, first of all, I could not get a ticket for the Derby, annoyingly, due to uh, me not being able to get a season ticket at the start of the season. And uh, of course, Exeter, as expected, was going to be the hard away, was going to be the hardest fixture to attend in the season. Uh, I haven't been able to get a ticket for it. Um, and because of that, I can't go to the game. Literally one of the main reasons, even though you've got Liam, Harvey, myself, trying to work hard to try and find a, a ticket to get, um, to get anyway. But no, it hasn't happened. So that's reason number one. But reason number two, and this is where the main reason comes in, Reason number two was actually, so, hear me out on this, I was planning to go to Exeter this morning regardless anyway. I was planning to go to Exeter regardless this morning to basically 
go up there, feel like it's a match day for the Devon Derby, uh, and basically do my usual interview fans before and after the game. After the game could still happen, to be fair, but before the game, well, my plan was to do that this early morning. I've got up this early morning for this um, occasion as well. And my plan was to leave Exeter at half past 10 to head back to Plymouth for half past 11 because I have booked, Liam and I have booked myself into Argyle's club lounge to watch the game for 12 o'clock. Um, it's a 12 o'clock kickoff at uh, St. James's Park today. But um, yeah, it, uh, it, unfortunately, that hasn't gone to plan because a signalling box on the trains has completely failed between Plymouth and Newton Abbott and it's delayed every single train this morning from like six in the morning, five in the morning. So it's not just a disaster for me, my plans, but also, also a disaster for all the travelling Argyle fans that are going to watch um, the biggest game of the season, especially today to uh, support the boys in green and they're not able to do so because of this um because of this um signaling so i feel bad for us all um well so i've had to come up with plan b i'm instead as you can see heading towards plymouth ho i have therefore cancelled my entire vlog plans for this morning which i do apologize for everyone it was not it was not planned at all and unfortunately there's nothing I can do but at least on the plus side that I know that because of this inconvenience it's safe for me to not travel right now because the last thing I want to do is get a delayed train to Exeter and then another delayed train back to Plymouth in the space of two three hours four hours and then miss kickoff. It's not worth it. It is not worth it. So here I am, about to see the beautifulness of Plymouth Ho. So I'm going to take you guys on a coastal path tour to get my mood going and mental strength going to prepare for today's big game. Plymouth Argyle away to Exeter City Football Club and considering the previous result was that 2-0 home disaster versus Lincoln so this is the game we have to turn things around unfortunately because of Lincoln I'm not confident and unfortunately in a prediction I seriously regret I've backed us to lose 3-2 to the scum. I'm hoping the boys prove me wrong, though. And also, I'm known for jinxing things. So I'm hoping this is an excuse to jinx Exeter. But I have backed Jay Matete to score, no matter what. But over the week, I have got a bit more confident because there has been rumours and possibilities and very likely that Adam Randall is returning today for the derby and could be starting today on his return. I mean, look at that view. It's so beautiful, isn't it? To be fair, I'm annoyed this train's got cancelled, but you cannot beat this view. And the sun's shining like that. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love Plymouth so much. I honestly do. I mean, just look at this. This is just stunning. Absolutely stunning. But anyway, um, Adam Randall could be back and also Bally Mumba could be back, but on the bench most likely, as you remember, he did get injured originally versus Morecambe. So we will see what happens, but this is my predicted lineup anyway. I think the ones to watch for Exeter today are Sam Nombe 
and Jay Stansfield. They're two up front. But I think they have to look out for Jay Matete. This is my starting lineup for today, but I think it could be. Callum Burton, Macaulay Gillespie, Dan Scar, James Wilson, Saxon Early, Joe Edwards, Adam Randall, Matt Butcher, Jay Matete, Danny Mayer, and Ryan Hardy. But we will see what happens. It is a big day today. It is Derby Day. And even though the first part of my episode has completely gone wrong, let's just hope that the main thing is, is that Argyle get three points. No matter what! It's, it's beautiful, isn't it? It is absolutely beautiful. Oh, bloody hell. I want to go swimming now. I don't care if the derby's in four hours. <laughs> I feel like jumping in the sea. <laughs> I genuinely do. I mean, look at it. I want to... I could just buy a wetsuit at this point. I actually jump in the sea and go for a swim. Looking at that, I genuinely feel like it. I don't know. Okay, here's something I will say, though, while I'm here, actually. And I will say this. And I'm going I'm to I'm make sure f um, people that watch the channel remember this as well. If Plymouth Argyle Football Club... I'm going to say this now. If Plymouth Argyle Football Club get promoted to the championship this season, I will jump in that water in celebration. I will. I genuinely will. And take myself on a swim. If Plymouth Argyle win the league, if Plymouth Argyle win the league though, not just promoted, but win the league, I have to jump off a pier. Like I did years ago in Penzance for a football challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to face forfeit football. Oh god, that's a high pier. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, do I have to do this? Screw you, Joe. Why? Why? If I didn't, um, he would have to do that every bath challenge if um, I won that. It's a stunning morning for the Devon Derby, isn't it? Uh, so here we are. At, we're at the Royal William Yard. And now, I want to before I look at that amazing view, I want to show you something. Because I totally forgot that this sign existed down here, even though it's a company based in Callington, but is a sponsor and well-known in Plymouth, no matter what. And obviously, Argyle's, one of Argyle's main sponsors. But I did not know there was an old Ginsters factory here. Look at that. Literally the same logo as what's on my shirt. That's amazing. Anyway, I'm going to take you this way. Like, I, as you can see, I'm on my bike. Now, this is, uh, well, we're west of Mill Bay, where Brittany Ferries and all are. We're, by the, we're, in the, we're at the Royal William Yard. All that over there is Devonport. And the docks at Devonport's all the way down that way, the naval base and etc. That is, uh, that's Cremill. That is Cornwall right there. And if I could swim that right now, I would. That's that's a criminal ferry docking in. I think I could see the Welcome to Cornwall sign in the distance. It's all the way over there. Let me zoom in. 
yeah sort of but yeah no um that's Cremil and this I mean this is Cornwall that 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 all that there is Cornwall and all that and that because that's tall points in the distance but yeah what I was gonna say was that what I was gonna say is that um, this is where um, this is where Mount Edgecombe is, a country park uh, right by um, right. It's in Cornwall and it's right by Plymouth. But I don't care if if um, this is Devon territory and that's Cornwall territory and that's the Tamar separating it. All this is Plymouth territory and Janna territory, no matter what. All of it, just everything around you, and it's just. It's beautiful, isn't it? So yeah, obviously, like I said, my original plans didn't go to plan. So I'm just taking on you on this spectacular view on Derby Day before the Derby itself. It's coming up to nine o'clock. So I am now going to get myself breakfast. I know a restaurant here where I can go in to get breakfast as well. It's one of Cornwall's very own as well. I recommend it, especially if you're from St. Ives and if you live in Truro, but that's where I'm going to go. You're going to find out where. I'm not going to say because I don't want to spoil it for you. But that's where I'm going to have breakfast. So, yeah. Enjoy. This is where we are. I've missed this place. Right. We're leaving the Royal William Yards now. For an away day. Because, obviously, we're away to Exeter today in the Devon Derby. <laughs> for an away day, we're headed to Home Park. <laughs> Let's go. You know what? It feels lovely, to be fair, that... Even for an away day, it's nice to go to Home Park for it. It's just a... I'm just treating this, especially this first bit of the episode, as just a day out in Plymouth. So yeah, off to Home Park. And we're going to win. I hope. Come on, the Greens. Right, we're at the Britannia, so it's now time to take the helmet off and put the amazing hat on. Up the Janners. Oh, he's ready for match day. He's ready for match day. Oh, sh hang on. I'm an idiot. I did not see that car coming. For sake. Oh, Neil. Hello. That's Liam's mum, anyway. Hello. It's match day, Liam. Devon Derby. How are we feeling? I love the shirt, by the way. That is amazing. Yeah, I had to wear it, so I'm kind of confident, but not at the same time, just because of. Well, it's now the day, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I totally get what you mean. I totally get what you mean. Because of the Lincoln result. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. Lincoln was awful. You have to be confident. I've gone for a two-one win today. So. Yeah. No. To be fair, you've done a lot better than me, so I will give you that. Yeah. Um, I will give you that. Um, but no, it's a beautiful day today in. What truly is the capital of Devon? It's not Exeter, and I and I don't care if I'm being biased. It's the truth. <laughs> yep. That's just going to rattle so many Exeter fans now. I don't care. <laughs> anyway, um, anyway, Liam's getting food. I'm getting a drink. So nothing better to start the Britannia. So yeah, uh, come on the greens. I say, come on the greens. We both say. Yep, come on the greens. So yeah, uh, all this, all this. <laughs> He's just whacked my helmet. <laughs> Right, Liam, lineups announced. Go on. What is it? What is it? Burton, Houghton, Wilson, Scar, Butcher, Edwards. Oh, oh wow. Um, ha Hardy's benched. Not surprised, in all honesty. Although, on bench. also surprised because Shuey loves playing him. Anyway, yeah, carry on. Ennis, Cosgrove, Azaz, Galloway, Early. I thought Early would start today. Ennis is back. He's going, he's going two up front. Yeah, no, he is. Can Who else is on the bench? Gillespie. Gillespie's on the bench. Oh, for God's sake. As Max said, hashtag free Macca. Uh, Gillespie, Hardy, May. May is on the bench. Shuey, man. Come on. Mayor. Oh, my God. Is he... Oh, yeah. I think this is your breakfast, Liam. Yeah, um, oh, it's good, to be fair. He's even benched uh, Randall. I mean, to be fair, that doesn't surprise me. He just come back from injury, but... Why is Mayer and Gillespie and on the bench? Shooey! Is he doing one of those where he's going to be like, oh, I'll just let Exeter take the lead and then we'll just bring my subs on and we'll win the game? And uh, Callum Wright's on the bench, but he... He's... Yeah, to be fair, I'm not, I, I, I wouldn't have started Callum Wright anyway. No, I wouldn't, no. So, yeah. No, um, 
Interesting. But no. Okay, so now, now that it's gone 11 o'clock, lineups have been released. Actually, actually, while you're there, if you've got enough data, do you mind checking what Scum's lineup is? Because I, I need to know what it is. There's an amount of data. I'm gonna oh, fair enough. Yeah, I need to know what Exeter's lineup is. I can't believe I'm typing that out. I can't believe it. We well, can just clear it off your search history. No, no, no. <laughs> Jamal Blackman, Key, Sweeney, Ameson. Bloody Park, Ameson. Hartridge, Mitchell, Kite, Chalk, Ouch, Ouch, C H A U K E, however you say his name. Collins, Stanfield, Number. Yeah, not surprised. Who's on the bench for Scum? Woods, Caprice, Sparks, Browns, and White. Scott. Yeah, no, fair enough. So, yeah. Well, the lineup's released now. Gone eleven o'clock. Just less than an hour before kick off now. Oh, that's 11. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's that is the time then. Um, <laughs> how are you now feeling coming into this huge game? Well, obviously it's going to be huge, isn't it? It's the freaking Devon Derby for crying out loud. I almost choked on Um, it's amazing to see this man's mind at work drinking that coke. <laughs> yeah. It's an interesting lineup. I, I'm glad Cost was signed because he's my goal scorer, which is happy days. Yeah, um, fair enough. I see. I, I see us going one 0 up, them equalising, and we just nick it late on. Yeah. Uh, and I think one of our subs will do it. Yeah. Uh, probably like Matate. We'll, we'll just... Can I just say, imagine after all the criticism he's got um, lately, imagine if it's Hardy. It'd be the most Ryan Hardy thing ever, yeah. wouldn't it? Indeed. 100%. Um, score prediction then, you're going 2 on Argyle. Two on Argyle. Yeah, Coast, 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 Coast. Nah, fair enough. No, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I love the optimism, to be fair. Love the optimism. Um, as it stands, um, obviously, I know, I know where I know where um, I know where. Um, I know where I think um, I know where I think you know where Argyle's going to finish end of this season. I know where you think you're going to put Argyle. But where do you think Scum's going to finish end of the season as it stands? What position in the table? Fourteenth. Fourteenth. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, still around mid table, but yeah. Nah, fair enough. No, there's a there's a big midfield battle there. Do so, uh, they do us a favour against uh, Wednesday? Yes. Oh, they got both Wednesday and Ipswich to come. The bright. Here we go then, guys. It's Exeter away, but at home park. So let's do this. Ah, oh, look at this beautiful stadium. Come on, you greens. Smash them up. That's what I say. All I'm going to hear now on the TV in 25 minutes time is their stupid Exeter chance. And I'm just like, F Exeter. Right, let's do this greens. Come on. Look at that amazing silverware. Oh, sorry, Liam. Oh wow. Mad. Let's do this. And listen to that countdown. 14 minutes left to kick off. That loses up to up. Nigel, how are you feeling coming in today? Um, all right. Score prediction? 2 1 Same as Liam. Same as Liam. Who's your goal scorer? I think Adam Randall would come on and score. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I'll yeah. take that. Obviously, we'll all take that. I think you'll score the winner. Coming back from injury as well. That'd be um, great. Is there anyone? Is there? Is there anyone though for scum we need to look out for today? If you had to choose one player, I said number. Yeah. I'd yeah. say Stansfield. Stansfield. Yeah, yeah. Enough, yeah. The two up front, I'd say the same. Yeah, is there anyone in particular for Argyle that they should look out for today? I think Finner's has because I think he's got something to prove. At the yeah, 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 yeah. He hasn't been uh, the best last couple. Last I mean. Ages, really. He's been injured as well um, in that factor as well. But yeah, no, yeah. I, I remember his Barnsley performance. Was, we were there when we went to Oakwell and he was terrible that game. He was absolutely terrible that game. But um, all right, um, question for uh, um, question for you again now, Nigel. Um, obviously, we said a few weeks ago on where you think Argyle's going to finish. Where do you think Scum's going to finish in the table? As the table. Material. Any position in particular? 12th, 13th, 12th, 12th. Yeah. Fair enough. I a bit said, higher than Liam. You said 14th. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Could easily happen. That mid table is so interesting. Right. This is a question I haven't asked you both yet on the channel since we're in April now, and I may as well ask this now. Give me the three clubs that are going up this season. I'll go. I'll go first. Yeah. 
Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. Seconds, yeah. And Barnsley. Barnsley win the playoffs. OK, go on, Liam, what's yours? Pass. Wednesday. Yeah. And Peterborough. Oh, Peterborough, fair enough. Oh, that's a good shout to be that. They could win the playoff final. To be yeah. be done for now, give me the four clubs that are going down. Forest Green. Accrington, Cambridge. I think Burton will stay up. For me, it's between Morecambe and Oxford. But I don't know. Morecambe, yeah. You're both saying Morecambe. And so you, you agree with Liam on the bottom four? Yeah. Lovely stuff. In distance, Here we go then. From a return to the Championship. Obviously, a prize I can't film the screen because copyright issues, so you so get my face to the game. Here we go. Kickoffs have begun. City in the red and white, kicking towards the big bank in the first half. Yeah, their they're fervent support. What's it? Oh yeah, Tin Pot Terrace. Can I just say, it's been two and a half minutes, there's already been a scrap, and I love how the first two people involved are Stansfield and Cosgrove. Like, why am I not surprised? Towards a near post, well defended by Houghton, and it's clear the danger. It's going to come back again, Pike finds Collins. Close down by Ennis again. Play back down the line, Stansfield looking to put pressure on. Oh, no, 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 Get in, Cal, get in, Cal. Oh, Jesus Christ, what is our midfielder defence doing? Butcher nearly gave it away then. Cal saved us going 1 0 down. Callum Burton up to the top. That was Saxon's fault, that was, in my opinion. He lost the ball originally. Nick Stansfield did it. What a save by Burton. And then Butcher couldn't clear that. Gee, up, man. I'll tell you what, the pitches are lagging a lot. Right, really if Exeter to score, I'm going to blame the pictures on Argyle TV. Apologies for the feed that's coming in. Stansfield going to touch Stansfield, still going. We just got crowded out by two Argyle defenders. Gee, Argyle. Stansfield going to touch Stansfield, still going. Again, he's at the centre of the action. Come on, lads. Can't we need to attack. Yeah, Stansfield again, you know, showing his danger. That's twice Exeter have nearly had a shot on goal. That's something we need to work on. Yeah, I'll just need to make sure that... As Liam just said, yeah, it needs shocking, it needs improvement. Hey, good ball, good ball, good Sam! Oh, no, Exus has cleared that. That's the best we've done so far in this game. Matt Butcher just offering his... Looking really promising, that was, then. Yep, three o'clock kickoffs Great later on. So, yeah, so one thing says that, two to things says that. Up the Burton and up the Charlton. The oh, and up the Forest Green. <laughs> <laughs> it, I have, you have to have hope, at least. Go on, go on, go on! Go on, Sam! That's a free kick, ref! Thank you, thank you! Oh, stop complaining! Typical Exeter. Well, we've got a free kick. Come on, the Greens. He's his body between the man and the ball and drawing the foul. Imagine, oh, the limbs, the limbs at home park watching this for an away day. Please don't be watching me right. This could be a big moment. I hope you're right when saying that. Right, here we go then. We'll finish as over the free kick, Dan Scard. Trying to put off Jamal Blackman by standing in front of him. Will Ainson was the first to come in and push him away. Here's Sweeney in there too. He can do this quite a lot, actually, Dan Scar, just stand in front of the goalkeeper until the free kick is taken. But again, you can see the tensions are high. Referee doing his best just to try and defuse that particular situation. Not often you see Dan Scar dwarfed. But he is there by Jamal Blackman. Anyway, 
Matt Butcher we go. with his free kick. Hips the top Frickin of the wall. Frickin' deflects. I remember Mitchell versus Atkinson Sally the other week. He looked very dangerous. I'm just hoping that that doesn't happen today. Lads, go on, lads. That's it, Saxon. Take him on, take him on. And it's, of course, it's the bloody Ainson. Of course, it was the bloody Ainson. From Alex Hartridge. Devon Derby, this is. Too strong for him. Low ball in. Oh All my God! Get it rid of it! Spoon back in behind by Wilson. Yeah, that ball could have gone anywhere. It's gone out for a corner. Limin scum look dangerous. Scar's dangerous just been outdone by normal man. He's a real threat, Dan Scar, on that occasion. I think it's one of the best centre backs in the league we're talking about as well. Oh, in Jack's words, the silly boy. Does he put it into the middle? <laughs> back to Collins. He <laughs> locks it into the box. Up goes Galloway. Wins it ahead of Sweeney. Out for a city throw. Go on. Give me a 1-0 win now and snap your hand off for it. 33 minutes so far. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, a 1-0 win. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Both sides having periods. I said to Liam before the game, imagine if, like, like looking at, looking at, um, looking at Suey's lineup and Sass. And trying to juggle and play the way. It's back into the Argyle penalty area again. The last few games, we've all, as fans, been criticising Ryan Hardy's performance. And then today, he just proves everyone wrong. It would be the most Ryan Hardy thing ever. Yeah, it would be. 100%. Oh, he's butchered it. He's butchered it. That was a terrible joke, I'm sorry. Can we find something here? Can we find something here? Come on! 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 Because I think oh, he was feeling the Argyle striker. And like I said, it's Ainson again. Half time, nil nil. Yeah. All I'm going to say is, it could have been worse, but it could have been better. But yeah, and there you go. I'm going to get, in fact, while I've got my face on camera, I may as well do it straight away. So yeah, half time, it's, it's half time in the Devon Derby. Exeter nil, Plymouth nil. Yeah, I agree. 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 Yeah, I ag
What a start to the second half! Come on, Argyle! Nearly 1-0 up. Oh, oh, thank God that is wise because that was a terrible mistake by Cal. And that is a shame because that is a shame because I think he's been alright all game so far. And that is a howler. Thank God that went wise. That was scary. Let me just show you something. St James's Park. Home of no signal. Charlie Price, pays to price, I'm not. I'll go TV, not work. If that was home park, that would be working fine. Indeed. It's back now, the minute I say that. <laughs> right now, come on, boys, press forward. Go, have a shot, have a shot. Oh, no! He's gone straight to Jamal again. He's done it again. He's done it again! Because Charlie Price, if you could, if you could bother to, um, you could, if you could bother to go to the game, that would help. Oh yeah, And this is why I wanted to be at the game. Situation. Why is he going short? Come on, boys! This is huge if we do the double over these <laughs> this season. That's <laughs> never blink. I don't care. Oh, that is limbs. This is massive if we win at this tin pot terrace. Matt Butcher scored it, apparently. Matt Butcher, sorry, I got it wrong. I thought it was Ennis because I looked for the celebration, but no. Get on, Matt Butcher. Huge if we win today, and this is a big makeup for Lincoln on Monday. As it stands, though, we can't let people like Nombe and Archie Collins back into this game. Come on, Argyle! Let it go, let it go, let it go. Let that ball go out of play for an Argyle goal kick. There's something to hold on to now for Argyle. Oh, it's not. It's only pretty it's not happened in the late stages of the game. <gasps> We've got to hold on. This is, a, this is massive three points if we win today. And that, as it stands, gives us confidence going into Shrewsbury on Tuesday. Another hard away day. Oh, hang on, hang on, go on! Oh, it's hit their limit defenders. I'd have got you to meet my family. <laughs> my mum lives up there. <laughs> They're in absolute oh. jubilation at the moment. As Gillespie prepares to take this throw. Enjoy it, enjoy oh, it while we can. Oh, right oh, on Come on, let's so. make it two! Let's make it two to shut these benders up. Hey, are you talking about the referee now in the game? Yeah, go on. 
Yeah, you were saying about me going to you see a long one? Russell Rovers, yeah. And he was also a our lucky mascot. So the only downside that rap was the four little way. I could hope, I could hope. I don't know. Yeah. Twelve minutes to go. Alton will deliver it this time. It's a Jordan corner. Towards the near post flicked on by Wilson, but safely onto the roof of the net from a next to city point of view. All I'm going to say is obviously I want a second goal but I don't care if it ends 1-0. It's a massive three points no matter what and massive towards our promotion chances. Say it again Liam, he's got, he's got a prediction for 90 minutes. Six minutes out of time. If it's the same as what happened at Burton I will punch my screen. Like I've said before, like Liam and I have said before, the referee for Burton away is a rating of minus 10. Lemonas, we wouldn't do that. Bolton wouldn't do that. Derby wouldn't do that. Just because they're a promotion fan, it's which go berserk. We wouldn't even do that. We'd have the balls to play on. And we'd win. Bloody Ipswich. No, 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 no. Can you get a shot away from this position? No, clear it. Oh my god. Thank god for that. Well, that's the best chance they've had all game, in my opinion. almost. That nearly went bloody top bins. We need to be trying to find this out. It's a wow! Liam's found some new beef, by the way, guys. Oh, Kyle. Right, we are in stoppage time. Six. Liam was correct. He was correct. He's literally written in the stars. Bloody six minutes of added time. Galloway with him as well. There is Galloway. Don't give them any time. Let them stay, Matt. Green Army! Green Army! Green Army! Green Army! Straight to the corner from Adam Randolph. And there is the first time. Yes! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! That is a massive win! Come on! Get it! That's it! Oh, massive three points! That is huge towards promotion. I, want, I thought I was going to have a heart attack all game. That is an amazing win. Freaking love our greets. Come on! I told you my plan worked. I said, I said before the game, Exeter to win to completely jinx them, and it's bloody worked. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? I don't care if it's one nil. Massive win. Huge confidence for Shrewsbury on Tuesday night. Oh my God, that is. You cannot get any better than that. We have done the double over the scum in the best way possible. I can't imagine what the limbs are like over there right now near way end. It must be amazing. That is a week saved after a disastrous Monday. Oh, I'm so over the moon. We've done it over the scum again. <laughs> what are we saying? Come on! Come on! We're top of the Come on! This is the home of football. Look at that. Freaking love this club. The double over the scum. And the three points come back to this beautiful place. Up the Janners! Massive win, cheers, Argyle. 
Oh yeah, I'm uh, I'm waiting for Exeter's version of this. <laughs> oh, what a win. And you know what? The weather tells you absolutely everything. I mean, look at it. It's yeah, beautiful. It's goal, it? What a win. What a win. Oh, you, you predicted it. You predicted it, mate. You predicted it. No, that's class, mate. That's class. Exeter away at home park. And we've got to freaking done it. Come on. Beautiful stadium. One thing I can remind everyone about. Massive, massive, massive. Up the mother freaking greens. Oh, I'm so happy. So am I. For, um, what, what's your feelings after that now? Uh, believe I now feel um, so much more confident going into Shrewsbury on yeah, Tuesday. Um, that is just, that is, what a way to respond after Monday's disaster. Um, yeah, Monday was a disaster. So obviously, yeah, full time. It ended in the Devon Derby, full time. Exeter nil, Plymouth one, Exeter a tin pot everywhere they go. And honestly, oh, you can't get, even if it's one nil, that is just a massive away win. Huge for promotion as well, doing the double over them. Um, and you know what's interesting? The last time we did the double over them, we went up 2017, 16, 17. So, um, but yeah, no, what is your thoughts after the game after that? Uh, we played much better in the second half, as we always do. I agree, as completely we always agree. Do. It, uh, people, our rivals are now going to call us second half merchants at this point. No, because we've had much worse second halves this season. True, that is Barnsley, true. Barnsley, Pete, ever. That is true. Yeah, Barnsley, we were better in the first half. Yeah, exactly. This might be an unpopular opinion, but I'd actually argue that Exeter this season played better here than they did at today at St James's Park against us. Oh, 100%. Yeah. That's what I personally think. Yeah, indeed. And, um, and, and I'll, I'll go TV Affords because <laughs> half the game got cut up. Yeah. Didn't it? Well, I'd say more so the fact that um, Silly boys. it's St James's Park. If that this was home park, that wouldn't have happened. Never. Because, well, it's it's home park, isn't it? Indeed. Um, but, yeah. Any player... Go, go. Yeah, no, go, 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 go. Any player that stood out for you today after that, Liam? Um, Scar had a really good game. Scar had a really good game. Yeah, no, I thought that was his best game from um, coming back from injury. Uh, I think it was the cross, yeah. Yeah, so he was bottom man on the back shot. Fair enough. Oh, that's 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 a good shout to be fair. Uh, I just think we were holding the ball up. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Holding. No the ball. worries. Oh, he held the ball up really. Yeah. Well. No, he did not. Uh, I'll tell you what. I was delighted with Ennis's performance today. Right after that, after that, I don't want people to think I'm crazy for this, but no, 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 no. After that. <laughs> Ennis has to start on Tuesday night against Shrewsbury. Against Salop. Yep, Salop indeed. Salop. Coincidentally, if I had to choose, my second favourite team in League One at the moment. Because obviously we all know who number one is. That's a stupid question, City isn't it? Merchant City boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Fantastic win. And they lost again, Exeter, which is amazing. And like I said... It's agent, agent Texeter because, because well, they'll comfortably batter Barnsley for us, and then, um, and then, and then um, when they play us, they'll be like, oh no, we'll, just, we'll help our goal get promoted. And that's exactly what happened by getting an own goal and, and for still, us. And they still got to face. Come on Wednesday. They still got to face. Come on Wednesday, and um, <laughs> I'm confident. <laughs> Wednesday and Ipswich, but first they will have sheep, as Liam would say on Tuesday night. Indeed. I, I can't lie; it would be the most Exeter thing possible if they if they lose to us and then they just go on and bloody beat point? Derby. Is no, it's point? Exeter. Yeah. No, because they drew nil nil at Pride Park. But we, <coughs> we won at Pride Park. So yeah, Pride Park's not for everyone. No. Be but speaking of which, who if you had to choose, who was your fav uh, favorite player? What the frick am I talking about? Let me start that again, for God's sake. Um, that is definitely getting cut out. <laughs> um, if you had to choose, which player today stood out for you most for scum? Nambe. 
Yeah, I'd say so. I don't think... But well, Stansfield was alright. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, and, and Key and one of their other players... I mean, I can't, can't lie. Remember. I can't lie. And that after we scored, you know, when they nearly went got that top bins, I actually thought they were going to equalise. Is that almost top bins, is it? Yeah, it was, the one that was nearly top bins. Yeah, wow. they nearly made it one That was like all. the 85th minute, wasn't it? 85th minute? Around that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That would have been awful. But no, no, yeah, would have been awful, 100%. Yeah. No, massive win, massive win. And yeah, as we say, Time bring on Shrewsbury. Just remember, Exeter, we are the kings here. Up the Janners. Come on! <laughs> Exeter. Uh, Alright, guys, so to wrap up the video, well, first part of wrapping up the video, we have made it to this place, as we all know, St. James's Park. The home of Exeter City Football Club. And uh, I've got a special guest uh, right here, um, right here, guys. Um, so I'm just going to turn my camera around a sec. We got a spe special guest, but obviously, of course, it ended full time. Uh, Exeter nil, Plymouth won. Obviously, from my point of view, a brilliant Devon Derby win. Um, on the opposing side, making his return from Halloween. Instead, it's Easter. We got Tony, Exeter fan. Commiserations, mate. How are you feeling after that? Another Devon Derby loss, really. Yeah. But, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, as I said, it wasn't Butcher's goal, it was an own goal. Off yeah, one no, of it wasn't own goal. It was an own goal. Off Amerson. Will so, Ameson, yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, Aiden Ameson, yeah, we're now going to call him, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, you know, it, 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 I think a lot of it just kind of says. That actually we're in a good place pretty much yeah. because I mean with all the resources that Argyle have got and it took an own goal pretty much to beat us today yeah. um, you know I mean I think we're fairly snug in mid-table yeah no so either way whatever happens it's been a fantastic first season back for you guys it, uh, yeah. is it currently 12th 11th place in, at the moment uh, somewhere I know it's somewhere around there but either way it's been prior to the 3 o'clock kickoff, we were 12th yeah no it's, so. been, it's been a brilliant season for you guys either way yeah. uh, obviously you got I know you'll take some of that confidence into Tuesday night because you've got a big game against Derby on Derby. Tuesday night yeah. so yeah. and I said to the boys earlier I, um, from Argyle, I said I said it'd be the most Exeter thing possible if they lose the derby <laughs> to beat Derby themselves on Tuesday night <laughs> to get a big yeah. win that way. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I think looking at it, I think realistically yeah. we need at least two points to avoid relegation. Yeah. I mean, some people kind of look at the teams at the bottom and kind of say ah, you don't have to worry, but you know, maths is maths at the end of the day. Yeah, and and I think two more points. I think. For us, we'll do it. Yeah, no, um, fair enough. And I think it's all right. focused for next season, really, yeah, and for yeah, another yeah. season in League yeah. One. And I mean, uh, you know, so I mean, you're right. It's quite, it, it is yeah. quite an act of a thing where lose today, yeah, potentially beat Derby, beating Derby on Tuesday night, on yeah. Tuesday night. But Derby don't travel that. That's it. That's interesting because I thought they were the best group of fans that came to Home Park this season. Like, I was working in the away turnstile that night, and yeah. they were unbelievable. I yeah. thought, in my opinion, but yeah. but if you're gonna go by if you're gonna go by like the amount fans bring and selling out and atmosphere that way, it's gonna be one of Tom Peel you guys without yeah, a shadow yeah, yeah. of a doubt. So, yeah. but I mean, I don't mean that. I mean, as in the team. Yeah. You know, because we oh, no. oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we like when because yeah. uh, when Derby played you at home. Yeah. Like, that was uh, live on Sky, wasn't it? It was, yeah. And, and, I, and um, I, can't, I can't lie, we were very lucky against Derby at the end, so... Yeah, but, you know, at the end of the day, you kind of put yourself in that position yeah. to win the game. And Derby have kind of been that team. Yeah, 100%. You know, when they've been on their travels. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, when, when the fixture list come out, back in... Oh, June it was like June, year. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's around when my birthday is. Yeah, so I mean, we looked at this month and it's like, yeah. we need to get safety by March 31st. Yeah, no, fair enough. You know, I mean, Morecambe, well, you know. I mean, that's the last theory, game of the season, that is Morecambe yeah. at, yeah, home. We're at home. Yeah. They just got a massive win today against Wickham. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're battling to stay up, they are, but yeah. the one I'm fancying at the moment at the bottom is Cambridge. So, they're on fire at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So, you know... It's... But who knows, really. Um, 
Who would you say, though, regardless of today's defeat, was Exeter's best player, regardless? I mean, I can't lie, I thought it was going to be one all at the end because um, you nearly, nearly got it in, top, top yeah. bins, nearly at the end of the game, yeah, top yeah, left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was going in, but it just yeah. went over. But yeah, but yeah who, was, who would you say was your best player today? Uh, for me, my man of the match was uh, Chags Koke. No, fair enough. The uh, South African international. Yeah. Because uh, he was display, uh, he was... Um, Utilizes the uh, defensive yeah. screen, uh, kind of almost like, um, kind of almost like uh, an old-fashioned sweeper. Yeah, yeah. You know, like a low-fire Mateus type role. And uh, and that, you know, I because because <clears throat> because he had that like that that freedom to to play in yeah. front of the defence, but behind the midfield. Yeah. That meant he was able to mop all of the Argyle attacks up. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I mean, as soon as Ryan Hardy come on, Argo change her shape. Yeah. And then it's difficult to do that. Where do you think Exeter's going to finish now at the end of the season? Anywhere between 10th and 13th. 10th and 13th, yeah, I know. Where do you think we're going to finish as it stands? Depends if we do you a favour or not. <laughs> <laughs> Depends if we do you a favour or not. Depends if we do you a favour or not. Give me the three clubs that you now think are going up for the championship next season. If you had to pick three. Uh, Argo, Wednesday and... <laughs> Derby. Oh, okay, fair enough. And now give me the four clubs, um, but apart from Forest Screens, they've now been confirmed by, yeah, by yeah. Barnsley today, but... Um, with the three clubs you think that will join them in League Two next season? Um, hopefully not us. <laughs> oh, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Because <laughs> uh, who's down there? Cambridge or Dale? I can't lie from my point of view. It'll be very interesting to see. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. but it would. Um, but yeah, I, I can't see it happening at all. No. The season you've put together. Uh, so yeah, because who's down there? Because we got was it MK Dons? Hey. Cambridge beat Peterborough today oh, in their really? derby, yeah, oh, wow. no, and... Because uh, that was the other midday kickoff in uh, Leeds. It was, yeah, the other uh, derby as well. Yeah. Cambridge beat Peterborough, Oxford lost to Bolton, narrowly, Morecambe yeah. beat Wickham, so that's a big win for them. Yeah. MK Dons and Cheltenham drew, Aki lost to Fleetwoods at home, so it's quite a mix there, but no, yeah. who would you say will join Forest Green at the moment? Uh, it's kind of hard to kind of be a pro on the, on the spot yeah. with that sort of question. No, fair enough. Uh, I, I would say, um, I would say Forest Green are gone now. Yeah, I mean, well, they already are, but yeah. yeah. Thank God we don't have to visit that. <laughs> you smashed them 4-0 at their place. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I'd say MK Dons, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think the uh, the wind has finally gone out of the uh, the Milton Keynes tail. Yeah. Uh, and I, would, if they do go down, in fact, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go quite bold. I'm gonna say within the next three years. The MK Dons will likely be conference. Oh, okay. That, that is bold, fair play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair play. You can just see the wind's going out of the snow there. Nobody's turning up, realistically. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the ownership, they just want to offload. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and, and I think if they just like rebranded and say Milton King City. Yeah. Then that might just bring a bit more ownership yeah, yeah. to it, and the fans won't get beyond that because they're hanging on. Not a hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, so yeah, so them, so first green Milton Keynes, uh, and I reckon Oxford, Oxford, Oxford and uh, Cambridge. Oh, Oxford and Cambridge. Oh, okay. Oh, so confused then. Then that makes sense now. Yeah. Nah. No. Fair enough. Fair enough. So Morecambe and Aki to stay up then. I think so. Yeah. yeah fair enough. I mean, fair enough. I mean Morecambe. I mean, you know, everyone was like writing them off. Like, yeah, you know, me included, I will be honest. 
but you know, the, the one just... I wrote off was Burton, but they've been incredible this second half of the season. Yeah. But then that's the Burton's way, you know, because I mean, yeah. they were the same last season and the season before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they're 100%. Com completely rubbish for the majority of the season. Then, then they turn on the screw somewhere. Yeah, you know, and you kind of think, well, if you did that at the beginning of the season, you might actually do something. I'm so glad we don't have to play them away again. That was a robbery, that two-all draw. Yeah, and yeah, they've, yeah. they've done us a favour today, beating Sheffield Wednesday. So, yeah, massive yeah, favour. Yeah. Uh, mind you, uh, uh, what, like, uh, one, uh, one, one of my city mates was quite happy. Oh, fair enough. Because obviously Burns are home at Carlin. Oh, I see. Brewers, yeah, of course. Carlin, it's like, really? Yeah. <laughs> Alright guys, so we're in Exmouth. Just had a brilliant... I've just had um, some pub time with Tony, the Exeter fan there. Um, and, uh, well... Um, look at that view. It's stunning, isn't it? I think this is actually... If I was at Exeter away properly today, I think this is how I would have ended the away day. And this is what I couldn't do last time I went to Exeter at Quinton Stanley. Finally, I get a brilliant view. There's the town there itself. Towards Jurassic Park, <laughs> Jurassic Coast. For sake, I've had so many drinks. And there's Torbay, Brixham, Paints, and Torquay. Well, I'm going to wrap up the video and then the rest of this. Devon Riviera Coast. So I'm going to take myself on a walk across this promenade before heading back on that train to wrap up the video. And yeah, I just cannot express what a win that honestly was today. I cannot express what a win that was today. Absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Oh, it's amazing. So, of course, um, we end the video pretty much back by the stadium again. Uh, where the Adam Stansfield stand is. Uh, but, of course, uh, before I end this video, I thought I may as well give you my full-time thoughts of the game while I'm here at the home of the biggest terrace which is not really something to hugely celebrate about <laughs> oh god anyway um obviously it ended full-time oh shit. I need to drop my phone then what a muppet <laughs> it ended full-time Exeter nil Plymouth one um obviously well, it's got a bit quieter here now, so I think I can express my opinion a bit more now, away, in a way, but I will be honest, I think along with Derby, back in September, that was one of Argyle's best wins of the season, away from home. And I'm not just saying that because it was the Devon Derby today. I'm saying it because it was literally, it was literally just a perfectionist of a result. That's really stood Argyle out now in the table. I mean, that's just proof on who we were up against today, a certain Exeter City with our name on it. But yeah, um, Obviously, no, it was a fantastic win. You cannot deny that at all. Um, it was, a, like we were saying earlier, the first half was more, the first half was more of a, uh, more of a nil-nil, if you get what I mean. Both teams had their fair sets of chances. None of them went according to plan at all. Um, Exeter probably did actually have the better share of fair, uh, the better share of chances in that first half, and I mean it's the same with uh, with with us as well. I mean, like both of us could have been at least one nil up at the start of that game, but it ended nil nil at half time. It wasn't a surprise at all. It was not a surprise at all, which then basically 
brings, it brings huge, huge, huge significance towards the second half on who is going to get victory or will it end nil-nil. There was that intensity as well, but Argyle and Suey ended up delivering in the second half. It looked like it was going to be nil-nil, but an own goal by Agent Will Ameson literally wins the game for Argyle. And I'll tell you what, it was amazing to witness. And I love how I'm saying that right at this ground. Uh, just taking myself on a walk, really, before the next bit of the journey. But reflecting on today's away win, I mean, I really think now, I really think now that that is us promoted after that, because I was not confident coming to Exeter at all for today. And the boys completely proved me wrong. And it was just an unbelievable feeling. It was just an unbelievable feeling, honestly. And, well, you just cannot get better than that, can you? Massive one nil win. And there is the home run. Exeter's final two home games, Derby and then Morecambe. But yeah, we delivered at the end, but I thought it was gonna end one all. I thought it was gonna end one all because Exeter nearly put it in top bins. Non they looked dangerous, Stansfield and Mitchell looked dangerous, but I thought Exeter were going to equalise at the end and the points would have been shared. Which could have been a blow to our promotion hopes. But at the end we held on to a fantastic win. Honestly, a fantastic win. Um, it says here, thank you for attending. Well, Exeter, thank you for the three points. <laughs> Enjoy League One next season. We might not be here next season. Anyway, um, but yeah, no, it was a very good win. Very good win. But it was very tight. It was very tight. And to be fair, from Exeter's point of view, it's not actually the end for them, really, because from their point of view, they can't really take that defeat. Um, they can't really take that defeat like as a worrying um, factor at all because they did play well and we had to watch ourselves at moments. We, had, we made some mistakes. It was a brilliant performance, but we weren't perfect. And even though it was an extraordinary win at the end, even though it was an extraordinary win at the end, it's the mistakes we made today is stuff we've got to look out for for Shrewsbury on Tuesday night. Uh, so, honestly, honestly, but the performance we put in though, in general, was so much better than what I saw on Monday versus Lincoln. And bloody hell, slow down. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, as I now make my way back towards St. David's railway station, I'll tell you what, It does bring me more confidence into the Shrewsbury game, considering Shrewsbury drew one all with Portsmouth. Exeter themselves have to bring their their um their strengths from today into their Tuesday night game against Derby. And I'll tell you what, it will not be an easy game for either of them. 
and Derby had a hard game today away at Bristol Rovers. So, I guess we will see. But basically, yeah. Um, obviously, at the end, it was a fantastic win for us. Uh, we've now got to take this forward into Shrewsbury on Tuesday and go again. And it's a massive three points for our promotion charge. So, who knows what will happen next. But, yeah, I think... I think I agree with Liam that... I agree with Liam that uh, that Scum's best two players were Mitchell and Nombe. I don't smoke, sorry. And then, um, as for us, Ennis was, oh, I mean, what a, what, what a way to make yourself return, honestly. Niall Ennis had a phenomenal performance today. And I just, I can't believe it. It was a brilliant performance. And to be fair to, to be fair to Niall, that's going to give him huge confidence going into Shrewsbury as well on Tuesday. It was great to see Adam Randall back. It was great to see Adam Randall back after being out for a while. He loves our club as well. And you know what's even better? You know what's even better? Argyle even posted at full time. And I genuinely, I'm not making this up. Argyle genuinely posted at full time. It ends 1-0 to us on their big day out. And I'll tell you what, I absolutely loved it. It was amazing. Honestly, it was absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, and... Uh, but for me, the best player today was Dan Scar for Argyle. Honestly, back to his best today. Phenomenal performance. His best performance since he's come back from injury. And he fully deserves it. And I cannot blame him one bit. It was a fantastic performance by Dan Scar, the magician, today. Uh, but, of course, from Exeter's point of view, not a bad performance from them at all. They'll feel, they'll feel hard down, but I guess that's part of football. And they can take the positives they had today into Derby on Tuesday night, whereas we have got to beat Shrewsbury on Tuesday night. Because... It's been another. It's been another great Saturday for us, to be honest. Despite Ipswich, because Ipswich destroyed Charlton six 0 at the end. Sheffield Wednesday lost to Burton away three two. That has done us a big favour in the promotion um, in the promotion spots. A big favour. So we'll see where we can go from there. But no, genuinely, genuinely. As I make my way back to St David Station after meeting Tony and making my reflection here on my bike we've got to we've got to pull out results now like that for the rest of the season starting with Shrewsbury there's only five games to go I can't believe how quick this season's gone I can't believe how quick this season's gone because there is five games to go. Shrewsbury away and then the three home games in a row. Cambridge, Bristol Rovers and Burton before the final game of the season away at Port Vale. Very excited and very nervous because obviously I want to end the season in the top two. I don't care who joins us out of Ipswich on Wednesday, but I just want us in the top two. Obvious reasons to get promoted, being in the championship for the first time in 13 years. We've missed it. We've missed it a lot. So we will see what happens. And in the meantime, guys, I'm going to end it there because I need to get back to St. David's to get this train. But yeah, 
a massive win at the end. A massive, massive win. Personally, our second best away result of the season behind Derby at Pride Park when we won 3-2. Honestly, absolutely phenomenal from the boys today. Let's bring on Shrewsbury. Bring it on, Salop. All right, guys. Um, as we all know, it ended. Um, I'm currently in Newton Abbott at the moment. Um, I'm about to wrap up this video. Um, but before I do, because I am headed to Torquay after this, but you can see the beautiful tracksuit I'm in. But full time, it ended full time. <laughs> Exeter nil, Plymouth one, and this is where I guess the two clubs come together because I am joined by another Exeter fan here, Simon. How are you Hello. feeling after the game? So yeah, you are. You've got the two badges right there. But yeah, how are you feeling after yesterday? Slightly gutted, but not too disjointed. I thought we probably just shaded the game overall. Yeah. Um, doesn't reflect the result, but yeah, it's, it is what it is, isn't it? You know, we're not going up, we're not going down, so. Either way, you've had a brilliant first season back in League One, yeah, regardless after being in League Two for nearly a decade. Yeah, we've done all right. We've done okay for sure. No, definitely. What was your score prediction before the game? Because I can't lie, I was not confident going into yesterday after our Lincoln performance. <laughs> Funny enough, I, I predicted we'd lose 2 0. I had us to lose 3 2 because I said it was the same referee as the one who battered up you guys battered us 4 0 in 2019 and uh, oh, yeah. I was there thinking well that's not a good start and then I was not confident after Lincoln and I said I said watch it now Scum will be up for this after um after seeing that game from us but my jinxes work and it did again yesterday so just another one of those really so I literally that I guess that's the other thing I predicted an X as a win just on the basis of I can jinx Exeter and it worked but there you are, but no. Um, overall though, um, so you had us us to win. Who did you have on to score for us yesterday? Ardy, Cosgrove, anyone up front for us? Oh, Cosgrove's obviously a great player for you guys, and, and Hardy yeah. as well. But um, yeah, I just felt our squad is a little little bit weak, and um, we're missing Giovanni Brown. Yeah, probably our best player, arguably anyway. Um, so. Yeah, but we're still on a learning curve. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of young players in the team. You know, we've, we've, done, we've done okay, and I'm quite, I'm quite happy with the season overall. Yeah, no, don't blame you. I don't blame you. I'm, um, glad, I'm glad we're not fighting relegation because we've got some big teams to play in the next. A few lot games. of a lot of people had access to fight relegation as well. I mean, I, I at the start of the season, I actually thought you'd be all right. I just, I just didn't think you'd be where you are now I think I had your 17th start of the season prediction so, so yeah. you've done you've done a lot you've done really well to if, we, if we finish top half that's great it's, it's a great first season no, Barry, if you're in that mid table nothing to play for battle now with Charlton Shrewsbury who we've got Tuesday night Fleetwoods uh, a few over there um, could bring Portsmouth into it now because I don't think they're going to make the playoffs now after their draw with Shrewsbury yesterday no. but uh, who knows? Who knows? Um, anyone for? Um, is there anyone though for Exeter yesterday that stood out for you despite the defeat? I think Jay Stansfield. Yeah. He fought like a Trojan warrior. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know he was. Uh, he was brought up with Exeter, really, with his dad and that. But he had one of his better games, one of his best games, in fact. Yeah. For us, I think the whole team in general, they were all up for it. We just lacked that little bit of uh, impotent in front of goal. Yeah. In front of goal, we were lacking for sure. I thought you were going to equalise at the end as well, because that shot from, I think it was, I can't remember who it was, it was one of Mitchell or Nombe, but it nearly it went was top Mi left. It was Mitchell. Yeah, Mitchell, it, it nearly yeah, went yeah. top left, and I honestly thought yeah. that was going in as well. Yeah, they, they all played well, but they, it's a sort of, you know, it's a, it's a game where you sort of rise to the occasion slightly. Yeah. And, um, no, I'm delighted my boys delivered, because they knew we were under pressure after Lincoln and we knew it was such a big game and we knew you'd be up for it obviously it's the Devon Derby so I'm glad I'm glad we got it at the end beat us twice this season, so. it's but, a statement yeah. for our promotion hope especially that <laughs> Burton did us a big favour yesterday beating Sheffield Wednesday yeah no no no, uh, no offence but I hope we play you again next season I mean <laughs> I don't you think, would say that you yeah, would course, say that yeah. I mean that's the only thing I'll take from next season is, is I'll be like well at least we've still got the derby but I, well, I've I, been waiting for the championship for 13 years so I know what I'd obviously yeah, rather I, so. I think you'll go up but I, on yesterday's performance you're definitely going to need a few more players in the championship yeah no I but agree that, I completely that, agree completely that team agree. played yesterday wouldn't cut it 
in the championship. I mean, to be fair, I completely agree. I said to the boys I work with on YouTube on our girls fan channel, I said, I said, if we want to get to the championship, hey oh, that's brilliant. We want to be there, but we have to sign some players over the summer. Simple as that. Especially if we haven't got our star keeper Michael Cooper now till I think December. So we've got to sign right. players. I, I well, agree with that completely. What's going to happen is that whoever finishes second to Ipswich behind Ipswich. Well, that's, if, that's if Ipswich win it, but yeah. I think they will. Yeah, no, I mean... So whether but, be, on you know, current form, I'd say they are the best team in the league right now. I mean, I'd never thought they'd thrash Charlton like that. That is no. incredible. But they are a great team. So anyway, if you finish... Where do you think you'll finish come end of the season? After, uh, if you have to give me one position... I'd say 12th. 12th. Uh, not bad at all, then. No. Still mid-table and still top half. And we'd have taken that at the beginning of the season. Yeah. Where do, you think, where do you think Argyle will finish now, end of the season? Second. You're going to say second, which I'll take anyway, because that's still automatic will. promotion. Of course I Of course I will. That's all I want is second. And then when we've got it confirmed, I'll be like, now we'll try and go for the title. <laughs> so all that really. Um, before, um, before we leave, um, a couple of things. Um, I, now that it's April and uh, we're getting very close to the end of the season, obviously Forest Green's relegation was confirmed yesterday after that, after Barnsley hammered them. But... Can you give me now the three clubs that are going to get relegated with Forest Green for next season into League Two? Do you know, I'm not if you had at, to pick three. I'm not looking at the league table. And I've not really taken much notice of the bottom because we haven't been struggling. There's a few down there, Cambridge, Morecambe, Oxford, Aki, MK I, Dons. I'd like to see Morecambe and Accrington go down. Fair enough. And the MK Fakes. <laughs> um, Pure, but not not only because they're northern based teams <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah I don't know we've got to play more come last game of the season yeah right? no, I know that yeah, so I know, yeah. We, we could send them down but yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see, we'll wait and see. No, fair enough and give me the three clubs now that are going up Ipswich Plymouth Sheffield West oh you're going same as me I because I, I said I said I think Wednesday will win the playoff final. That's what I personally think. Because I I don't want to be in the playoff final, especially considering Wembley in against Bolton. So <laughs> we never don't, don't talk we never do well finals. Wembley. That's what yeah, I was about to say. That, that's what I mean. Lost, this lost corner three. of the country never do well at Wembley. No, no. Like this is where both of us are so similar here. And I honestly know I, I said to Wembley. As well. yeah. I said and Torquay I was, and that's where I'm heading in a minute and I said to Wednesday I was like I said to Wednesday fans I was like I'm more confident you'll do it in the playoff final than us at Ipswich because we never do well in playoff finals we, last when, time we did well in a playoff game. final was the 90s but in my life I've never seen us get do well because before to this year we had Wimbledon in 2016 and we were at, we blew it completely blew it and then I guess you don't want to know about your playoff finals because that must be the worst once. feeling ever one once and uh, yeah, we beat Cambridge in the final. All the others we've lost. So they're not good. Not good at all. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, before we leave, uh, don't have to do this loudly or anything, but this is something I've always wondered. Can you give me your favourite Exeter chant by any chance? If you had to pick one. Um, I better not. It's, the language is. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I'll, I'll edit. I'll edit. I'll edit it. Oh, anyway. well, maybe not. I mean, you know, I don't know. Um, if you mean a modern day one or the old, the old school ones. Um, yeah. We used to like drink up your cider, which we yeah. used to do. In, I suspect you did it as well, didn't you, Dan? Argo, did you or not? Or were you too young to remember that? Well, um, either I'm too young or I've never heard us <laughs> sing that before because we've got other chants we sing instead. <laughs> yeah, it's. Um, the modern day chants so they, they, all, all teams seem to do the same ones don't they I'm just know? hoping our, um, the away end where we were yesterday were chanting to the home end going um, um, one nil on your big day out or something uh, actually I didn't really hear the Plymouth fans that well yesterday I, I thought the atmosphere oh, I'm going to find out on Argyle TV tonight it, it wasn't great not from where I was sat and, um, oh you were at the game yesterday then oh, fair yeah, enough yeah, yeah. And, but what uh, was the atmosphere like then between both sets of fans so obviously I couldn't go to the game I mean, I'm nearer to the uh, big bank. Yeah. Although I'm not, I'm not in the big bank, so I could obviously hear the big bank like you do all the time. Yeah. Um, which we're we're quite good, quite good. Um, the Argo fans, I thought, not as good as we've seen you, Bert, guys. Before. Right. Okay. Not as loud. Um, I think it's maybe because 
you were under the cosh for, yeah. for certainly for the first time. I was going to say, it might have been similar to Home Park. So you, Home Park, both ends were rocking, in my opinion. You, you, yeah, you might have had a little bit of bit the, jit, the jitters and the nerves were showing perhaps a bit with the fans when you were expecting to be all over us and you certainly weren't. <laughs> but anyway, you know, you've obviously got a big fan base, but Plymouth's yeah. twice the size of Exodus. So. And you've got all of Cornwall. Yeah, like I'm, fit, I'm, yeah. I'm, I will be. A, I'm Cornish myself, so it comes from that as well. Uh, well. We haven't got exactly all of Cornwall. Bude's in Exeter Town. It's on the postcode district, so because it's got EX postcode. Yeah, yeah but then again, it's is it borderline. Near, is it borderline, near to really? Exeter or, oh, I don't know. I mean, but, we're not in Plymouth or Exeter territory right now. We're in Torquay territory right now. We but, are, but, but Newton there Abbott, are. I know Newton funny. Abbott. Newton Abbott does actually have a lot of fans from all three yes, it clubs. Does. It does. It does. Yeah, because I, I have a mix. friend here who supports Argyle, and yeah. obviously Exeter fan here in Newton Abbott. So yeah, it, Newton it has, Newton it has a does, lot for yeah. all three. Yeah, it does. It definitely has all three. Uh, Torquay's the closest, but um, I'm not so sure about Torquay. I don't see a lot of Torquay fans, but there are Torquay fans. In Newton. Perhaps they're just hiding under the woodwork. <laughs> But Torquay... You never know, they might survive. They've, they've, they've won, won yesterday, yeah. They've won six or seven on the short now. They've won, they won yesterday, yeah. They beat, they, um, they brilliant. Lose it. They so beat York. And they're on the verge of... They could stay up. They, 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 they could stay they up. Will. I think they will go I up think a great escape. Stay up. But I'll tell you who go could down. go down. Yeovil. Yeovil are going to go down. Sure. And you know who they could play next season? If one of my favourite teams go up, Truro. But then again, I'm Cornish. I want any Cornish team to do well, because, well... Toro, I, yeah, I look yeah. at it like I don't care if it's the other side of the Tamar for me. I'm Cornish, but if you look at the map professionally, Argyle is really deep down the Cornish club, as well as the Devon club. A Devon club. Oh, yeah, that's, 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 what mean, like, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Do say that Plymouth is in Cornwall. Of course, <laughs> they, they, they would. Geographically, we do know. Just on the oh yeah, no, of course. But I mean, to be fair, to be fair, it's I, I just I've always called Plymouth borderline anyway because you've got so many towns around Plymouth that are corners, and there's yeah. others that are in, not there. Well, you've only got across the bridge, bridge yeah. and you're in Ash, and Exactly, exactly yeah. that, exactly that. But it's funny because on Halloween. I heard the Exeter fans chanting F off back to Cornwall, this county is ours. So yeah, I just ba I bantery took it back just saying, Well, I think we own both Devon and Cornwall, and you're just a small town in Somerset, so you can battle that out with Yeovil. Yeah, we're definitely not in we're not we're not in Somerset. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's your nearest county though. I can't lie though, I think it would have been better this season. If Torquay were in League One this season, this season would be so much better. Because you get the three ways then. Because you get the South Devon derby, and then you get the Devon with the Ira derby between you two. Yeah, that's a different kind of derby. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, we call the Exeter to Torquay games the Tin Pot Devon derby. Tin Pot. <laughs> right. Um, look at that sign. The second word along. You're going to see where we're ending the video, huh? I guess. I mean, come on. It is the Devon derby. I know the game was Exeter Plymouth, but it wouldn't feel right just not leaving Torquay. Um, it wouldn't feel right leaving Torquay out of um, this video. So that's of course where I'm ending the video. We've made it to the yellow corner of Devon. This club really could do it. I'm not joking, they really could do it. So as you can see there, there is the pitch. And the yellow, the yellow wall, the yellow army banner, but this is where I'm going to wrap up this Devon Derby video, but sort of, but no, yeah. Um, Torquay, obviously, are currently two divisions below us. They're in the National League. Uh, it hasn't been the greatest of seasons for the Seagulls. Um, 
Two seasons ago, Torquay should have got back to League Two. They were in that playoff final at Wembley, but heartbreaking the penalty shootout against Jeff Stelling's Hartlepool. And then last season was a little bit disappointing, finishing 11th mid-table. And then, well, it was in those mid-table places, around 11th, 10th, 12th. Yeovil were in a similar position. And then this season, as it stands, it's gone horribly wrong because Torquay are currently in the bottom four and that, as it stands, is relegation to the National League South, which they have done before in 2018 and coincidentally played Truro in the National League South and ground shared with Truro the season after in 18-19. Yeovil, though, are also in the bottom four, but recently Torquay have been absolutely exceptional in the National League and are two points away from survival. They've caught up to Aldershot, caught up to York, caught up to Maidenhead. They've caught up to Aldershot, Maidenhead, Dorking, where the amazing Dorking Uncovered documentary is on YouTube. Yeovil, though, are far from it, and I've heard that if Yeovil lose their next National League game, they are relegated to National League South, which is mental, considering Yeovil were in the championship in 2013-14. It's mental, isn't it? Um, Torquay, on the other hand, unlike Yeovil, have a chance of staying up. And they really could do so. With Scunthorpe down, Maidstone down, Yeovil on the verge of going down. Torquay are the only ones that has a chance of staying up. They've got to better Aldershot and Dorking and Maidenhead if they want to stay up. I'm confident Torquay can do it, not going to lie, because the last couple of performances were... I thought were incredible by the boys in yellow. Um, and to be honest, that like I said, they really could do it. They really could do it. Obviously, I was here with Harvey England back in November for their FA Cup game against Derby. A game to watch. A brilliant game to watch. I have to be honest, a brilliant FA Cup tie that was. But no, these guys could do it. And obviously, while I've obviously spent the whole of my episode, of course, talking about the Devon Derby that happened yesterday, Exeter Plymouth... Um, I thought I'd um, bring the neighbours into this as well. Sorry about my camera ring. I thought I'd bring the neighbours into this as well. And just saying, Torquay really could do it. They really could stay up, honestly. And it would be an incredible great escape for them as well. It'd be unbelievable, but who knows? I guess we'll see what happens. I guess we'll see what happens. But it's actually a shame Torquay have fallen this far compared to us and Scum because... Honestly, honestly, um, if Torquay, and I'm telling you this now, if Torquay were in League One right now with us and the scum, then League One would be so much better right now than it already is. And also the derby would go three ways, so it'd be unbelievable. But no, we'll see what happens from the club in yellow because these guys from Playmore really could do it, you know. And uh, one day this club will be wanting to face both us or Exeter yet again, but... I guess we'll see what happens. I guess we'll see what happens, really. I think the aim now for Torquay is to basically stay up this season and then push for something so much better next season because they'll want to get back to League Two as soon as possible. A massive thank you to everyone who watched this video. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to turn the camera around for the closure. So, yeah, cheers for watching, guys. And remember, keep it green. Up the Janners, up the Greens, up the Argyle, up the Pilgrims, up the Plymouth. That just echoes, but I don't care. Come on, you boys in green. On to Shrewsbury on Tuesday night. Take care, guys. Have a good one. Good night. Yep, and there we are. We're on the way home. 31 miles to go. No, I'm joking. I'm not, I'm not cycling all the way back to Plymouth right now. I don't have time. <laughs> um, but who knows? Maybe in the summer... Leave a like and comment, actually, if you want to see this as a challenge of mine in the summer. Put down comments if you want to see me, because I love my cycling. Put down comments if you want to see me over the summer when the football's not on. A, a cycling challenge, a cycling challenge of um, the three clubs down here. So I've got to start at Exeter or somewhere near Exeter and finish back home in Plymouth but I have to make sure I go to Torquay along the way as well if you guys like to see that as a challenge of mine over the summer to uh 
get some exercise in as well and uh, pull off something that a lot of people wouldn't want to do, please let me know in the comments and, and in the comments below because that's an idea I wouldn't mind doing, to be fair, and you'll get to see that over the summer. Anyway, cheers for watching, guys. Up the Argyle. When they pull on the green, they're all generous.